Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the infamous Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles, California. So I've been kind of digging into a lot of unsolved murders, crimes, etc. And being really into the paranormal, I want to share these cases with you because some of these cases are very controversial due to people believing some of these cases had things to do with the paranormal affecting these people. There have been a lot of unexplained and odd things that have occurred just at that hotel. I'm going to start with the story of Elisa Lamb, the woman who stayed at the hotel when she was studying abroad. This was a really bizarre case and this actually does have footage along with it so that's why I want to share it with you guys. So her death is actually still unsolved. No one knows exactly what happened. On January 31st, 2013, Elisa was reported missing by her family so they went to check the surveillance footage and what they found was extremely odd. So I'm going to play that surveillance footage for you guys and then I'm going to as well explain my views and my findings on this video. So as you can see, she enters the elevator and she doesn't press the elevator button like the average person would. She then continues to press all of the elevator buttons. There have been people who say that she was playing the elevator game. But why would she be playing it in the first place? It's just kind of weird that she would do that by herself. I personally don't believe that that's what she was doing. She was diagnosed bipolar and I have firsthand witnessed people going through mania. That's when they are manic and they aren't really in the right mindset and sometimes do things that don't make any sense. So I believe that she was having a possible manic episode. She was also on medication for this. There is a possibility she could have taken too much of her medication or used other drugs. I'm just listing the possibilities. But what is really weird that I noticed is that the elevator door, it starts to shut and then it doesn't. I don't know if it's because she pressed all the buttons because I didn't see her reach for the open door button as it was closing. She was just kind of standing there. So that part I thought was really 
weird. Also, another thing that I noticed is that when the door starts to close, there is a weird shadow that kind of goes into the elevator. I'm not sure if it's just the surveillance lighting. It happened right when the door started to close and they opened as if someone was walking in and you do see this black figure walking in as well. So that is something that I wanted to share with you guys as well. I did not notice this until I was editing, but I am rewinding it as well as fast forwarding it so that you guys can see what I am seeing. Comment below if you do see it. Also, she started looking out of the elevator, looking to her right and her left, like she was trying to look for someone or something. Again, that could be due to the mania. However, she stood outside the elevator, and what is really weird is that the elevator, it doesn't close. Any elevator that I've seen closes automatically. This one didn't, and it just stayed open while she sat there, and it appears that she's talking to someone in front of her. That's the part that has made this a really bizarre case because the Hotel Cecile is known for paranormal activity, however, what happened next didn't make any sense. After she was reported missing and they were searching for her, they hadn't found her yet. A few weeks went by and hotel guests began complaining about the water. So the water pressure wasn't right and then a couple started complaining that the water would turn a blackish color when they'd first turn it on and then it'd go normal and it also had a foul odor. So they went to check the water tanks and what they found in there was Elisa's decaying body floating naked in the water tank. Now how did she get up there? How did she get on the roof? To go on the roof you either have to climb one of the fire escape ladders that is in some of the rooms but I don't believe her room had one of those escape ladders so I'm not sure how she would get to that. There's also a door to the roof however the alarm goes off if you open that door so no alarm was reported to go off. They aren't sure how she got up there and if she did find a way up there then she would have had to climb like a 10 foot ladder to go to the top of the water tank, lift like a 20 pound lid to open it, jump in, close the lid somehow and take off her clothes. There are speculations that it was a suicide. Personally, I think that she would have possibly jumped from the roof rather than climbing into a water tank. I think that's just really odd. There's no convicted killer or anything. There was no one seen on the security camera footage. It was just her by herself. And why I bring up the paranormal, I'm not saying that that's what killed her. But the history of the Hotel Cecile is very dark and I'm going to get into that now. So in 1927 is when the hotel was constructed and they were targeting people traveling for business and such to stay at that hotel. However, a lot of the homeless started moving over to that area and it started attracting different types of guests and some of these guests were actually convicted murderers. Some of the murderers that had stayed at that hotel and resided in it for months happened to be Richard Ramirez, who was an American serial killer, burglar, and rapist and was convicted of killing 13 people. Another serial killer that was said to stay there was Jack Unterweger, and he stayed at the hotel in 1991 for five weeks. During his stay at the hotel, he murdered three prostitutes inside of his hotel room. In the 1950s and 1960s, the hotel became known as a suicide hotspot. In 1962, Pauline Auden, aged 27 years old, jumped from the ninth floor after arguing with her husband in the hotel room. When she jumped, she actually landed on a pedestrian and killed him as well. There have also been reports of people jumping from the fourth floor, the seventh floor, and the eighth floor. One story I heard about, I'm not sure if it is true, however, it is a story of a woman who didn't know she was pregnant and she went to the bathroom and delivered the baby on her own. She then threw the baby from the window and killed it. It's also home to another unsolved murder that took place in 1964 to a woman named Goldie Osgood. She was known for feeding the birds in the nearby square. She loved feeding pigeons. Later, she was found dead in 
in her room strangled and stabbed to death. This isn't even the half of the deaths that have occurred at that hotel. This is also one of the last locations that the Black Dahlia was seen alive. This hotel actually influenced American Horror Story writers to film at this hotel and make an entire season based off of it. And while they were filming at the hotel, they experienced some weird activity. One man actually took a photo of the hotel and what he noticed lurking out of the fourth floor window was extremely weird and he believes that it was an apparition. Many people who have stayed at the hotel have reported very weird activity. I personally believe that there is a lot of bad energy in that hotel and it's possible that the negative energy did provoke some of the deaths. The Cecil Hotel has actually been renamed the Stay on Main and it is now open. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Hit that notification bell so that you guys know when I post and I will see you guys in my next video.